Here we're going to look at five different ways of representing what recursive calls get made in a recursive function. The first is going to be using the built-in trace function bracket library. Here I have fact on the right, and when I call fact with six, it shows each of the recursive calls that get made, and for each of those recursive calls, it shows the value that gets returned by each of those. The greater than sign indicates that new recursive calls are being made, and the less than sign indicates that a return from a recursive call has happened. And it matches up, the, so the 6 matches up as the return value from FAC of 3. Same 24 matches up as the return value of FAC of 4. Another version can really rely heavily on algebra. So here, if I'm tracing what fac of 5 is, I can say, well, that doesn't meet the requirements. n is greater than 2, so it comes to the recursive call. And I can plug in the value of n. So I, what I get is times 5 of fac of 4. Well, I don't know offhand what fac of 4 is, possibly. So what I can do is I can do the same algebraic step to figure out what fac of 4 is. Again, I get an unknown of fac of 3. I can do the same thing, figure out using the recursive call what fac of 3 is. Again, I get the unknown of fac of 2. Finally, I get fac of 1, which hits my base case, and I return 1. Then what I can do is I can use algebraic substitution to substitute in 1 for fac of 1, and then 2 for fac of 2, and then 6 for fac of 3, all the way back up to figure out what fac of 5 is. So each step shows the expanded step using algebra, and to get the answer, you use algebraic substitution backup. So you might find this is a helpful technique. Another technique is to keep track of all of the information all in one line. In the last step, I used algebraic substitution at the end. Here what I'm going to do is I'm going to continually expand a single line. So I take the same steps, but now what I do is I expand fac of 4 into times 4 fac of 3. And again, in line, I'm going to expand fac of 3. In line, I expand fac of 2. And finally, I replace the fac of 1 with the value 1. So this is a second algebraic type representation for what recursive calls get made. So again, each shows the expanded step using algebra, and each line has the entire answer. So when you get to the end, you just need to calculate from the inside out your final answer. A third algebraic version starts the same way, but instead of maintaining and rewriting this times 5 on each line like we did in the second version, I'm only going to rewrite fac of 4. So fac of 4 gets expanded on this next line. Similarly, then fac of 3 will get expanded on the next line. Again, only fac of 2 will get expanded on the next line. And finally, we'll calculate fac of 1, which hits the base case. And then what we do is we group these values back on up. So we have to gather those up at the end from each of the lines to get our final answer. This tends to be, I think, the most common representation of recurs recursion, but can be quite difficult to get right. It's easy, depending upon how clear your writing is, to get a bit confused in what's happening. So it's one word of warning. So again, each, shows, each line shows each step expanded using algebra, and you gather up all the calculations at the end. A final one uses a square diagram or a rectangle to represent each recursive call. So this fac4 function is going to make a recursive call a fac3, so that's another rectangle, and the result of that, it will multiply by 4. The fac3 multiplies whatever fac2, that recursive call, return by 3, and fac2 calls fac1 and multiplies that by 2. Finally, fac1 returns 1, and then we're able to see more easily what are the calculations that we need to gather back up. Hopefully these representations are helpful for you in both writing and tracing recursive functions.